Joined by William & Mary head coach Tony Shaver to his left is uh, Quinn McDowell to his right, Tim Rusthoven. We'll start with a, a comment from uh, Coach Shaver on the game and then open up for some questions. Well, I, I thought both teams battled really hard. I mean, you could see a lot of desire in both teams. Uh, I thought our effort you know, was certainly good enough to win. I thought our defensive effort was good enough to win tonight. Uh, but offensively, we weren't very good. I mean, our execution level was low. Uh, a lot of, you know, again, a lot of that has to do with Northeastern. They really played a great defensive team or game, I think. And, uh, um, you know, just a lot of little things execution-wise weren't very good for us tonight. And, and uh, it's really a big part of the game. And we also, two, two statistics that we've, we've split with them during the season, two statistics were glaring in the win and the loss was the number of free throws taken by the winning team and the, and the rebound total by the winning team. And clearly they won that battle tonight. We thought that would be the real keys. And they shot 33 free throws tonight and uh, out-rebounded by 15. And uh, that's probably the key to the game. Questions? <clears throat> Quinn, obviously uh, still raw, probably still sinking in at the moment. If you could talk a little bit about the emotions you're feeling right now, obviously your last game. <clears throat> Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's difficult to <laughs> believe that it's it's over. Um, I mean, like I said, to us, some of the guys in the locker room. Uh, uh, in terms of wins and losses. Uh, my career's not gone exactly as, as I envisioned it, um, especially this season. Uh, has not gone as anyone planned, uh, as anyone thought that it would go. Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, coming into the year, we had, we had such high expectations for ourselves, and then uh, just didn't live up to those expectations. And uh, <clears throat> what makes it even more frustrating is that I think uh, that every person in that locker room wants to win and wants uh, to do everything that they could do to make themselves a better player and make the team a better player, but we didn't get it done this year. Um, and uh, <clears throat> But as I told the guys, there's not a group of guys that I would have rather gone through this year with. Um, and uh, that's what's, what's made the last four years special. Hey, Tim. Um, what do you attribute the turnaround in the rebound differential from when you played them at your place a few weeks ago to tonight? Uh, I really don't know. I wish I had an answer, but it's just I think I think we played hard, but like Coach said, we just we didn't, we didn't execute. We didn't come up with the rebounds we needed to come up with. I don't know if it was 50-50 balls or getting a body on people or what, but we just we didn't do it. And it starts with me, so I take a lot of credit for that. And it's we just didn't play the way we should have tonight, and our seniors deserve a lot better out of us. Tony, did, did they do anything different defensively than you had seen in, in the previous two games against them? Not, no, not really, Dave. I mean, they, uh, you know, they're a good defensive ball club. I, we clearly shot it better last time we played them in our own building, but, uh, um, you know, we knew they would switch ball screens, which they did. I don't think our guards drove the switch as well. When there are five-man switches on our guards, we didn't drive that as well as we should have. And, and I don't think we got the ball to Timmy enough uh, on that switch. And it's something we really wanted to do. I mean, I think he ended up taking nine shots. But, uh, you know, that was one of the real points of emphasis for us was try to get him shots when they did make those switches. Hey, Coach, uh, can you talk a bit about the play of Julian Boatner? I know it's been a tough season for him, but um, seemed to really provide a spark off the bench. Well, he played really well tonight. I mean, you know, it was a game where savvy, I think, and intelligence really, really were important, and he has a lot of that. And uh, he's a really good young guy that's, yes, in some ways has had a tough year, but I think, I think Julian's a good example of this team right now. I mean, he, he certainly didn't play well early in the season, but he remained a great teammate and really improved here in the last three weeks of the season and uh, was really a key for us staying in that, hanging in that ball game tonight and, and giving ourselves a chance to win. So I thought he played well. 
Coach, did um, when when you got Lee in foul trouble and he goes out as quickly as he did in the second half, did did you feel pretty good? Did you think maybe you could you know kind of make a move on him at that point? Well, we we were happy with that day, but we also had our point guard on the bench all night. You know, Brandon Britt played I think 11 minutes because of foul trouble. So I think those two things all set themselves a little bit. Tony, you got within three um, fairly late. Can you talk about what happened at that point and then two, what he's meant to your program? Well, I think, I think we cut it to three and missed a, a free throw there that would have cut it to two. And then, uh, if I remember correctly, they came down and, and, uh, and made a three at that point. You know, big turnaround in a ball game. But, I mean, I, Tim, I mean, he's – Quinn's one of the more special people I've been around in my life. I, you know, I hate to see it in this way for him tonight. Uh, but he's made a significant impact not only in our program, uh, but to the College of William & Mary and, and to the community. Uh, as great of an impact as anybody I've seen in my 30-odd years of coaching. I'm really proud of what he stands for. I mean, to win that Dean Ellers Award twice, I think it's the first student athlete to ever do that in the CAA. And it's, um, he stands for a lot of good things. And his competitive spirit is something that will, will, will greatly be missed with our team. And it's something we'll have to, it's the biggest void we'll have to fill is his, uh, his competitive spirit. Uh, Tim, there was a point in that game in which the referees really started to get involved. Um, what did you think about the way the game was called? I mean, you can every game you can always go and talk about referees, how they did or didn't do. But I mean, it just they just called it a little tighter, and that's just we just got to play through it. That's that's just as much our fault. So we just have to learn to play through when when they call the whistle like that. Anything else from anybody? All right, thank you guys.